We're back talking golf. What else would we be talking about on a golf channel? <laughs> Greg DePalma here with Jared Smola. Another week on the PGA Tour and another long shot. What the heck is going on, Jared? This one was as surprising as any of the others. I mean, I know Pavan wasn't as big on the odds board as, you know, Dunlap and even I think Grayson Murray was even a longer shot, but man, I, I, I really, you know, we, we talked about it's usually favorites that win it at Torrey Pines. And you know, this, this was an exception. I think, I think, I think maybe a small part of this is the live stuff, right? Got these guys have left for live. It's watered down the top of these tournaments a little bit. So that's giving these long shots better chances to win. But mostly I still think this is just random, random chance that we've had four straight long shots. I think when we get to the end of the season, we're going to look back at these first four weeks and it's just going to you know, look, look like a, a, a one-off thing. And I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's going to continue. And, um, you know, my, my, my picks for this week, um, I'll tell you that I don't think it's going to continue because I'm definitely going with a couple of the, of the favorites. Well, you know, it's, it's something really weird if, a signature event has a long shot. Then, then, then we know that okay, yep. so, something's going on. But I, I'm going to do a little bit of both. Uh, of course, you can only do one and one and done. And that's that, there's the good yep. and there's the bad to it. The good is is that when when your player is not in contention, at least you're getting someone that nobody's picking. Exactly. So you're still kind of yeah. hanging around. I am off to a horrible start and one and done, but I, I, I what you do is I, get I a win. I'm still, I'm still, yeah, I'm still fine because no, no one is doing that well. I mean, I'm, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm near the back of the pack, but the, the gap isn't big just because no one's, no one's been doing so well. The, the, the last thing I wanted to say about Pavan winning at Tory, and you had brought this up on last week's show, is just not non-Americans winning at Tory has been pretty common, um, and we got another one obviously in Pavan, which is surprising to me because Tory seems like such a American golf course, right? Like super long, thick, rough, thin, fair. Like it feels like a tournament that the, the big hitting Americans should win, but for whatever reason that hasn't, hasn't been the case uh, in recent history. Yeah. But uh, you know, you bring up the rough and I don't know. It just seems that now the, the you know, the, the Ryder cup was, strategically you know the 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 course was strategically uh put together with uh a lot of rough and and Mm -hmm. and that's part of their strategy so they feel that the players there now have an advantage in these types of situations which is interesting and and maybe there's some 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 truth to that from what we saw on 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 this on sunday for sure but the the, the Ryder cup course wasn't super long was it no well that yeah i don't think so no you know, Tor- like we said Tory's the longest course on tour. That's true. Yeah, with thick rough. But, you know, just ge- generally, you think it would favor bombers, and not that there are no Europeans that you know are, are bombers. But generally speaking, like because you think about it, when the when the U.S. picks their courses for the Ryder Cup, they always pick the longest courses they can find. They try to you know max them out lengthwise, grow up the rough because because yep. they they want that length off the tee to be an advantage. So I'll. I'll I'll kind of continue probably betting, uh, you know, the, the long hitters, and not that Pavon. Pavon's not sure; he might even be above average distance wise. Um, so I not, think he's top he, five, top fifty. Yeah, so you know, not that he didn't fit the mold, but um, yeah, I, I'm just I'm just surprised so many non Americans have won at Tory. Well, I mean, I, I was trying to find some sort of trend. So the only thing I could come up with, and and I think that. Well, uh, look, there's nothing. There's nothing to, to to. You can't find anything for for Dunlap. That's just freak. That happens every fifty years. Okay, but the other two winners, Pavone and Murray, uh, they both won recently. Pavone won in October. Mm-hmm. Murray yeah. won in the KFT in October. And let's remember, a lot of these players, the best players. Sure, they played Century, but a lot of them didn't really play the last few weeks, so yeah. they're not on top of their game. And what are they? What are they really focused on this year, next week, this week? Because we have yeah. a, they're not usually focused on Pebble because they're not playing at Pebble, but now they're focused mm-hmm. on Pebble. 
So I think so you get some players that maybe might have played Tory this week that aren't yeah. there. And then throw in the fact that you get some players that are like, well, you know, I'm really, pl- I'm, 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 this is all about next week and I'm going to try to, you know, so I think there might be a little bit to that. So, sure. Yeah. But we'll see. Pavan, Pavan, Pavan I think, it hadn't, I think he had never won on the Euro Tour until he won in October. Yeah. I think he had gone like, yeah, I think it was, I, I was listening to someone. I think it was like eight eight years without a win on the Euro Tour. And then he wins on the Euro Tour. And then he wins on the PGA Tour. So I don't know, maybe maybe he found something. Maybe he's just you know, on a on a short lived hot streak. Uh, well, look, he was seventh at Sony, 39th at Amex. So he was playing. Right again, he was in the groove. I yeah. Well, I will say too. I think a a hole in my handicapping game is these guys from the euro tour because sure. you know, fantasy national fantasy national it's an awesome site it doesn't have stats from the euro tour so these guys like bavon who you know have only played a few times on the pga tour they're they're just not really going to pop at, in the stuff i'm looking at just boy like, guard hoy like, guard my boy hoy guard yeah he is you know for for all the love that ludwig obert gets hoy guard might end up being just as good yeah yeah, he's 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 for real. So but yeah, that's the, that's the thing because see Hoygaard though, all right, that's one thing. But yeah, having Pavon do it, you're like, I mean, you're looking at the top of the leaderboard for the, for for a few days, and it's like these these are play. What is this? A European Tour TP Tour event? I mean, what's going on here? Yeah, no, it was strange. Because yeah. guys like Pavon yep. don't win on the PG Tour that quickly. They just don't. They struggle for a even, while. He didn't even win on the Euro Tour, from what, yeah. from what I've heard. So. Yeah. So. So, the other, so the two other the two other guys I wanted to talk about from Tory, and they're both in the field. Actually, there's three guys that are all in the field this week that hit it really well and putted poorly. The first one is Finau. Finau was, like I think, the best tee to green um, last week. He couldn't make a putt. Ober, I'm sure you saw, he like th- – did he have three putt or four putt from like five feet? He did yes. just a couple short ones. So putting killed him. Um, and then the other one is Hideki, another guy who struck it really well, putted poorly, but you know, is kind of the norm for, for Hideki Matsuyama. But um, those, those three guys stuck out to me as um, guys who hit it, really hit it well enough to, to win, just didn't make enough putts. Yeah. Hideki. I mean, we're at the point now we're getting there that. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, Something's off. <laughs> I can I consider him this week again. I, you know, I I'm not going to get to him probably for the better, but Is, you know, he, the, um, remember how consistent he used to be. He was a machine yeah. a few years his, ago. His right. His his approach play is still you know borderline elite. Uh, the putting, as always, is a problem, and then his his off the tee game is an issue from time to time. Like, you know, last week he was like field average off the tee, which is fine, but he lost strokes at century off the tee. Um, now the, re- the reason I considered him this week is because we, we can get into this week's event, but um, off the tee play does not matter nearly as much this week as it did last week. So, you know, it could be a better fit for Hideki. Yeah. Um, as we do that, let's, uh, let's take a look at, your stats for this week. I'm going to post them up. All right. So there are the stats. You've got the usual top 10 event history, the last five years. And then the other is top 10 in proximity from one to 125 the last 12 months. So what's up with that one? So, so the course history is important. If you just go back and look at who's done well at this event recently, it's not going to be perfect because usually there's a three course rotation here, right? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they play, one on Pebble, one on Spyglass, one on Monterey Peninsula, and then everyone plays Pebble on Sunday. This year, I guess because it's an elevated event, they got rid of Monterey. So now it's yeah. just one round, one round on Pebble and one round on Spyglass the first two days, and then everyone plays Pebble. It's also a no-cut event, so everyone will play Pebble the final two days. So, I, so rather than just looking at the event history, I looked at how these guys have done at Pebble and Spyglass, and I weighed – I weighed Pebble Beach, you know, three times as much as Spyglass because okay. we're playing three times on Pebble, one time Spyglass. So this is th- this is that top ten. This is how these guys have done, basically on the course rotation they're going to get this year. Um, you got you got a few big names, right? I mean, Day, Cantlay, Spieth, Homa. Those are kind of the bigger names that tend to play well here. Otherwise, though, it's it's more of the you know 
mid mid range of the PGA Tour. You know, guys like Nick Taylor, Naismith, Tom Hoagie, Brendan Todd, um, which which is what makes this week interesting because a lot a lot of years the big names don't play here, right? So there's a lot of the a lot of the high end players this week that um, just haven't played Pebble in a in a long time, if if ever. Yeah, the field. Let's keep in mind is down to 80 players. Normally, it's twice that. Uh, you have 49 of the top 50 on last year's FedEx Cup points list playing. Of course, John Romney only one not playing. Uh, he's making his Live Golf debut in Mexico this week. So let's keep that in mind. The Live Tour does start up in Mexico this weekend, uh, Friday, of course. And um, you t- want to take a look at, if you want to use a little bit of 2019 when they came to Pebble for the U.S. Open, mm-hmm. uh, four of the top six finishers, including the winner, Gary Woodland, uh, are not playing. So the only two of the top six finished the 2019 U.S. Open are playing. Both finished third in that event, Xander Schauffele and Justin Rose. So we'll keep that in mind. Oh, you know what? By the way, speaking of Liv, uh, we didn't uh, – the news came up, I think it might have been early last week. We didn't have a chance to talk about it too much. But now it, two more. Off the boards, Moronk and Hatton. Mm-hmm. That's it for Terrell Hatton. No yeah. more. Back, he's on live. We'll see him around in the majors, which is not usually good for him anyway. So I don't know. Maybe that's why Terrell took the money. He's like, well, I don't do good in these majors. I better just take the money. Moronk, up and coming player. Now he's in live. Yeah, and and Hatton, I don't think he's like in many, if any, of the majors now. Like he, he, he's not exempt because I think he hasn't done well on them. Really? So I'm not, I'm not even sure we're going to see, I don't know. I don't know exactly what the situation is for him, but I, I think there's a chance that we don't see him in um, many, if any of the majors this season. So that was, you know, surprising to see him bolt. Um, and he, he was in this field this week. I haven't seen it official that he's withdrawn. I assume he's going to be playing. Yeah. He's not playing the tournament this week. Yeah. But, yeah. So. yeah he, he, I'm sure he took his check and, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see if he is on the list of live. I haven't seen the live odds yet. Have you? I have not. I wonder if he's on that list. So, all right. And and, and so uh, so again the pro- the proximity the hundred to one twenty five. So yeah, so twenty two percent of approach shots at Pebble come from that yardage range versus the tour average of twelve percent. So almost twice as many shots are going to come from this. 100 to 125 yard range, which is, which is, you know, a short, you know, wedge range for these guys. I remember when I hit um, Tom Hoagie here, was it two or three years ago? The sole reason I bet him is because he was first in this field from that range. And, you know, that ended up being a big part of why he won. So okay. um, that, that's definitely a big part of my model this week. You can see the top 10, Eric Cole, number one, you do have Morikawa, not surprising on this list, Hideki on this list, again, why I consider him, but then otherwise, you know, again, it's, it's some of these, um, you know, lower end players. You do have, um, Brendan Todd show up on both of these lists as far as course course history and proximity. So I would not bet Brendan Todd to win this event. I would not trust him to win this event, but if you're into the, uh, you know, top tens or top twenties, I think Todd is obviously a, a good fit here. Well, the way things have started so far, anything's possible. I know. Never, never say never. Exactly. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to flash out the uh, – here are the odds. Uh, these are the uh, updated odds at DraftKings. So you can take a look there. Scheffler and McElroy are the favorites at 8-1. to one. And you have a drop to Shoffley and Hovland at 12-1. to one. Max Homa, 16-1. to one. Cantley, Spieth, and then the rest. You can see here Justin Thomas, 22-1. to one. And uh, we, go, we go – and again, remember, there's just 80 players – uh, to choose from. So uh, not a huge list, but uh, I think 80 is more than enough. Matter of fact, I like it when uh, the field, I mean, 50, I think is a little small, but I, I like the 80, yeah. 80 is a nice, nice number. So um, I wish uh, they would do, I wish they'd do 80, but then still have a cut down to like yeah. 50 after two days. But it's okay. now one of the things I decided to do this week, since it, now they call the century a signature event, but, I mean, it's not. I mean, it's such a small field, and it's um, even though it's bigger than normal now. And let's keep that. In, let's, look, that's the other thing we have to keep in mind. I mean, we're talking about 
Murray and Pavon, but and Dunlap, but Chris Kirk won the century, and that's when a lot of players showed up. Uh, you know, a lot of big names showed up in that one, and Chris Kirk. That we should have we should have realized something was something was fishy, something was going on. So uh, that's uh, that that was a tip off there. But um, what I wanted to take a look at was since this is the second of. And, and I don't – I think they count players, but we don't count. I mean, players, we know it's a big event, so we don't need to have the – just like the century. We don't need the signature status there. So there's really only seven if you think about it. And um, last year, the top seven, uh, we had uh, – who did we have? Let's see. Last year, we had Phoenix, Genesis, Arnold Palmer, RBC, Wells Fargo, Memorial, and Travelers. So those were like the real seven signature. Like I said, I'm not counting uh, players or century or anything like that. All right. So, um, and interesting because really there was only one long shot that won, and that was Kitayama winning mm-hmm. at uh, Bay Hill. Other th- other than that, but there wasn't really. I didn't notice any specific trends. Like it wasn't like you know. Besides so Scheffler, Scheffler is the only guy. But Scheffler did that every every, every event, every you know, the whole year. He was consistent. Yeah. Yeah. So some guys missed a cut in some events. Some guys were, you know, really good in some signatures. But I did see some trends that we're going to use. Uh, and, and those are the events, of course, that we're going to use them from, just so you know, uh, the rest of the season as we go through these signature events. So and, and I've talked about this last year with McElroy. All right. Because here's the th- So look, a c- couple of things with Sheffield McElroy. Uh, Sheffield, yes, he won a signature event last year. But let's also keep in mind. He was such a good player, such a dominant player, was in almost all of these events, and he only won once. And remember, the odds are 8-1. to one. So if he wins yeah. one again, which he probably will, it's still – I'd rather just not pick him at 8-1, to one, let him win one of seven. It's just going to cost me more if I have to go chasing him at 8-1 to one every event. McElroy, remember we talked about this, his earliest PGA Tour win is still 2012 at the Honda. You mentioned he's going back there, it looks like. That was week nine, March 4th. So Rory's never won out. doesn't mean that he might not be able to pick things up now with these bigger events early on in the season. Um, but it's yeah, just – He, did. he did just win on the Euro. He, he did just win on the Euro Tour. Well, on well, PGA so. events. Right, yeah. Yeah. But you know, he's, he's capable of winning. Yeah, and that's the thing, though. That's the trick, (laughs) is that he does the European tour deal early in the season. So when he comes over here, it just doesn't look like, you know, you got the trip, you got the, maybe he's, you know, where is he going to be living? And he's probably got all that distraction for the first few events that that takes him a little while to kind of get into things. So I do think that that matters, but you're right. First and second in is is, uh, two Dubai uh, uh, events this year. Uh, kind of blew the, the 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 second place, but he came from behind in the other one, um, and won that one because uh, Young uh, kind of blew that. But we'll, we'll talk about him in a little bit. But keep this in mind: Rory in the six signature events last year that he played, one top five, one in six signature events. That was the runner-up at Arnold Palmer. Surprising. Kind of. Who would goes you take? His, those two uh, disappointing performance between Rory and Scheffler. I mean, I'm I'm not, and I never considered either this week as a bat. Um, yeah, I would. The heavy favorites. I would lean towards. Yeah, I would lean towards Scheffler. I think. Yeah, me too. Um, He's more consistent. I, I trust his. Um, yeah, I, I trust his approach. You know, Rory's best weapon is obviously his driver, and that's that's mitigated a bit here at Pebble. So. Okay, and then we've got Shoffley and Hovland, and my top pick is is Shoffley. Matter of fact, it's between Shafley and Homa for me on one and done as well. And um, I don't, it's not that I take Shafley a lot because I don't, but I'm, I'm kind of feeling it here with him. He's got seven at, by the way, he, he made all seven cuts in the signature events last year. Five of those were top 25s, three top 10s, two top fives, and a runner up. So he's very good in the signature events. Um, he was third, as I mentioned, at the U.S. Open here in 2019. Only played here at Pebble once at the Pro-Am deal, 66th in 2017. But that was 2017 when he was the 300th ranked player in the world. So I don't care about that. This year, 9th, 3rd, and 10th. So he's got that groove going we talked about. You know, the Pavons and stuff. And maybe, you know, he's not going to be, uh, hey, I haven't played in, uh, I played once in the last uh, month or so. 
Six of his seven pro wins, by the way, came after mid-June, if you want to look at that as a negative. But that was the century, you know, a, a significant event enough. Um, yep. But he has not won, and this is something we're going to talk about, he has not won since back-to-back in 2022, July of 2022, when he won Travelers and Scottish Open. I mean, he, he's done everything but win. It's crazy he hasn't won with how well – really, he's he played all last year. He's opened this season, like you said, with three straight top tens. And the crazy thing about this season so far, he's lost strokes putting at the Century. and at, He lost three strokes putting at the Farmers last week and still came in ninth place. That tells you how good – the ball striking has been, um, like you said, limited experience here, but did play well in that U.S. Open. Um, Poa is his best putting surface. Um, you know, he's oh, there you go. Done well in Cal- he's done well in California in, in general. So um, I love Zan- I, you know, I, I still love Xander. I have no no issue with the bat. I would, I'd, I'd like to see him get off the schneid here and get a win. Uh, by the way, Hovland uh, was 12th at the U.S. Open in 2019, 13th in this event last year. Um, but – he only had two top tens and seven signature events last year. And one of them was a win winning Memorial um, 22nd century. That's it. That's all we've got from Victor Hovland this year. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait for uh, Victor Hovland. I definitely think Zonder's the, the way to go. Cause he's definitely a more in tune with his game right now than, uh, than Hovland. Right. So Hovland played century. Did he, has he played since then? Did he no. play? I don't even know if he played. Yeah. So it's been, you know, a three, three, four weeks for him. He did. Hovland did also win the U S amateur here at Pebble. Um, so he, he's definitely got some good vibes at the course, but um, he's just, yeah, I haven't seen enough from him to bet him at that number. All right. Homa 16 can't lay and speed 18. And yeah, Homa, uh, if you've been watching our show for the past year. And so, uh, you know, this is a no brainer that uh, we're going to have Homa on our list. And, of course, yeah. you have him at the at – uh, you're, you're, you're considering him one and done just like me. You have him at the top of your list yes. and your picks this week. Um, why not 16 to 1? You're getting double the money with Homa than you're getting with McElroy and Scheffler, which, again, I just think is a no-brainer in, in, in a week mm-hmm. like this. Uh, Homa's last three trips here were all top 15s. He hasn't played to this event in a few years, though, but he does have two top 10s. And he has, he, right now he has 10 straight top 15s worldwide with a win. That was the win over at the Ned Bank yeah. uh, in uh, Europe. Uh, 13th last week. And uh, six of his pro wins, by the way, and this is interesting, six came with at least two weeks off. Hmm. Did, Did you know that? know that? Did not know that. Yeah. I know that a lot of his pro wins have come in California. which They I have. Like, um, he, he is the best POA putter in this field. Um, he's he's putted he's putted well in his previous performances, like you said, tenth, um, fourteenth, and seventh in his last three trips here. To to me, Homa's just he's the best combination this week of a high end player who is in good current form and also has good course history here. There's really not many guys that check all three of those boxes. Um, yeah, fourteenth at Century, thirteenth at Farmers. He, Homa gained eight point seven strokes T to green at Century. He gained five point seven strokes tee to green at farmer so he's hitting it really well he can definitely get hot on these greens he's won in california he's won you know some of these bigger events um yeah he, he home was a bet for me and he's likely who i'll end up going with in one and done by the way the so the other uh, signature is genesis right genesis is a signature okay yeah. and he's, he's, he's got, got two wins there uh, just one, just one. Okay. But, he, but he's, but he's played. Well. I, so that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping everyone is targeting Genesis saving Homa for that. And that he'll come in pretty low owned this week. Yeah. That's the other good thing about this particular week. Uh, and, and others really in general, when we're going to get into these signature events, but, um, it's not like the previous weeks where you're, it seems like, you know, in these, in the one and done contest, you can have, uh, yeah, I won this week, but, uh, 50 other guys won. I can't imagine that's going to be the case this week. Uh, you, you can, you can, you can have so many different varied opinions about which way you're going to yeah, go this week. Yeah, it should be spread. And again, we, you know, we should <clears throat> remind people, this is a $20 million prize pool this week, which is, higher than anything besides the players you know that the, the prize pool this week is even higher than it is for the majors so you definitely want to use a high-end player in one and done this week 
Okay. And then the others, Cantley and Spieth. Now, uh, Jan, uh, one of her two one and duns is Cantley. And uh, Spieth is one of those where I just think you can't, you know, he, he, I took him, he was, I believe he was my one and done last year in this. And he was, and it was pretty much the worst he's ever played here. Um, but he's made all 11 of his cuts, nine top 25, six top tens, four top fives, a runner up in 22 and a win in 17. He's coming off a third at century before that sixth at hero. So he hasn't played a lot though. Um, and this is uh, also kind of interesting in the six, Signature events last year, he missed the cut twice. But whenever he made the cut four times, he finished second, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Uh, he was disappointing, 65th at the U.S. Open back in 2019. Mm -hmm. So you do see, and remember, this is the thing we have to keep in mind with guys like Spieth will get the day in a little bit, maybe even can't lay in a second, never miss the cut, play well here at Pebble. But now all of a sudden you're throwing in all the best players of the world this week playing right. on the golf course, even though they're not changing the golf course as far as I know. It's still the same golf course. they got the amateurs out there mm -hmm. for a couple of days. So it's just the same golf course except more prize money and better players. And that makes it a lot harder for these guys that yeah. have dominated here over the years. Yeah, and, and with Spieth, his course history is definitely baked into his odds, right? Like – if this wasn't a course where he has played so well, he'd be 25 or 30 yep. to one. So um, he, he's not a bet for me. Can't Cantley's more interesting because of the course history here and because it, it should be a perfect fit for his game. And I do think if you can get, you know, 18, at, I've even seen Cantley at 20 to one in some other spots. It's definitely um, tempting. I, he just, he, he hasn't played, played well. I mean, he was okay at century. He finished 12th, 52nd at American express 56th, Last week at yep. Farmers, he lost strokes off the tee and on approach at Farmers last week, which, I mean, I'm looking through his number. Okay, well, the, la the last time he did that was at the Century the previous year. So it had been over a year since he'd lost strokes both off the tee and on approach. So something seems a little off with his game, not that he can't figure it out over the next few days here. But, um, yeah, that, that was just enough for me to, to not bet Cantley. Yep. I uh, made six of six cuts, and he has um... – I believe both of his top fives have come in his last two appearances, 2022 and 2021. Then you have Morikawa at 20 to one, Thomas at 22 to one, and uh, Obear at 25 to one. So now we start getting to a couple some interesting players here because Morikawa is one of is either Homo or Morikawa for you with the one and done, and Justin Thomas is one of your picks this week and. Absolutely. I mean, we both love Thomas this week. So, uh, and then uh, Obear is just Obear. Um, and, and he kind of, Obear is a dangerous one this week because he kind of does fit the profile of what's going on this year. It's just, you know, we're getting these, because let's keep in mind too, the guys that are winning have never, like some of them, I believe, well, Murray won like 2017, but the other guys haven't won before. Well, Kirk, of course, but so we are having new time, first time PG Tour winners. Now, Obear won, of course, in the fall. So it, it, I don't know. It just seems like Obear might be one of these guys that could fit what's going on right now. And he's trending the right way. 47th, 30th, ninth last week. So he's getting better each, each time out. Cause remember early on, the first thing I said when he was out there, I think it was at the century. Look, I just can't take the guy until he starts getting a little bit familiar with playing with the big boys playing in the fall is completely different. The spotlight's on now yeah. you're playing with tougher competition. And it does look like that's happening ninth last week. Um, Morikawa, right. I was Morikawa is a dangerous one. He had one top ten in seven signature events last year. That's bad. He had three missed cuts in signature events last year. Um, he's also coming off a missed cut. Okay, so th these are bad things. But he's actually a good player coming off a missed cut. He does pretty well, mm -hmm. so, statistically <laughs> speaking. He also has a win after a missed cut. And so there are some good things there. Let's also keep in mind that he only had one top 10 in four majors last year, which is not like him at all. So he just did not have a good year. So that's why I'm trying to say there were some bad things to look at, but you have to be realistic that he just didn't have a good year last year. And that's why he didn't play well in the big events, including the majors. Um, it, but let's also remember the miscut last week, the previous three events, fifth, seventh, first. So he was definitely playing really well. He only missed a cut by a shot. And if he would have just made the right. cut, he, who knows what could have happened if he had a good Saturday. Um, yep. And and uh, anyway, you you like him for a one and done. Yeah, 
Uh, Morikawa won the uh, Open Championship the week after missing a cut. There you go. I remember that. Um, I bet him that week, which was nice. I see. Um, now you're that. Yeah, it's, you would remember. Yeah. And, and yeah, he. I mean, he he had an awesome Wednesday at Tory. Um, had a you know a poor Thursday. I know he drove it out of bounds on 17, which is you know what ended up costing him the cut line. So I'm not super concerned about that. I still think he's he's hitting it well. He's he's playing well in general. He's a good fit here. I mean, you know, he is again. He's second. Um, in this field, in that proximity from 100 to 125 yards, he's second on in, in strokes gained approach in general. You know, he is one of the best iron players, and that's super important at Pebble with these small greens. So, you know, he Murkow does not have much of a history here, which is a little scary. But I do think this course should be a good fit for him. I was I was basically down. I was I was looking at Homa, Morikawa, and Justin Thomas as like my three bets for the week and i knew i was going to pick two of them and i just ended up going with homa and justin thomas but you know morikawa was right there as a potential bet for me yeah i mean justin is just on fire as as we know fifth fourth third third in his last four uh if you look at it and also remember he did not have a good year last year but six top 25s in seven signature events last year Two top tens and one top five. He had nine top 25s. I'm not talking century. He had nine top 25s all year. Six of them came in signature events. And that's when he wasn't playing well last year. So now he's coming to the first signature event on fire. His game is just as as good as it could be. He did play Mm -hmm. here, but that was all the way back in 2014. Nobody cares when he missed a cut back Mm -hmm. then. And um, this is also kind of interesting Again, this will be a second appearance. Seven of his PGA Tour wins have come in his first, second, or third appearances at an event. Um, nice. And he's never – how about this one? He's never won a PGA Tour event on his third straight week of action. So he's a guy that needs rest or prefers rest, which is okay. You know, I mean, not everybody's Eric Cole. But you take a look <laughs> at – uh, last week, remember, he decided to not play, and maybe that was part of it. Is that, you know what, I've got these other big events coming up. I don't want to be in that situation where I'm playing three or four straight weeks. Yeah, for sure. Um, and you know, Justin Thomas is kind of similar to Morikawa in that the, the course history is not good. There's not much of it. Like you said, he missed Nothing. the cut in 2014. Yeah. He, he, also, he did also miss the cut at the U.S. Open here in 2019. Yes, he did. I looked at his, had his, I looked at his stats that week. He just putted poorly. The ball striking was fine. And, you know, Justin Thomas can putt poorly. He, he does that quite often, which, you know, is the concern. But um, he, he is a pretty good POA putter. I believe it's his his best putting surface. And he's just another guy like Morikawa. I think this course should fit him well. Again, off the tee stuff is mitigated a bit here. It's not as important. That that tends to be Justin Thomas's weakness. He can get a little wild off the tee, but as far as um, you know, approach play goes, he's excellent. You look at if you look at over the last two years, that 100 to 125 yard range, he is second best in this field. He hasn't been quite as good over the last 12 months just because his game dropped off a little bit. But uh, you know, when he's on, he's an excellent wedge player. The reason, the biggest reason that I ended up betting Thomas instead of Morikawa. I don't know if you've looked at the weather forecast yet. No. But su- Sunday, they're forecasting like 40 mile per hour winds. Okay. At, at Pebble Beach, which is right on the ocean, like that, that's going to be insane if they play through. How that about rain? Type of winds. There's a lot of rain throughout the week. Um, no. Well, that no, should no favor the heavier Sunday. hitters then. Yeah, but so Thomas is excellent in the wind. I know. I remember when he won the players. Uh, whenever he won the players, it was super windy that season. If you look at so over the last two years, uh, the best players in windy conditions, number one is Scotty Scheffler. Number two is Justin Thomas. And then if you're interested, the rest of the top five, Xander, your guy is number three. So that's that's good. Uh, Sung J.M. is fourth best, and Rory McIlroy is fifth best. So, um, and, and some and of those Morikawa, are the best players the in the world. They, they are. But, I mean, you, get, you look at, like, someone like Colin Morikawa, he's way down that list. He yep. struggles in the wind. Um I can maybe I'll maybe I'll tweet out um, that, that full list of you know how these guys do in the wind, but there also there there are some higher end players who struggle in the wind. So that that was honestly what pushed me to Justin Thomas is if they do end up playing on Sunday in those super windy conditions, I, I'd much rather have uh, Justin Thomas than Morikawa. Well, actually, yeah, I, I think if anything, maybe what it is is one of those deals where the stat is more towards which guys don't play well. 
in the wind. Sure. Right. You know, like yeah. uh, which which quarterbacks uh, can't throw the ball, you know, in the rain, <laughs> you know, that kind right. of stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. Taking a look at the weather. So Friday, uh, rain showers, 54, 10 to 15 mile an hour chance of rain, 60 percent. Um, what I don't, of course, what we don't want to see is thunderstorms, and I don't see any on, th- on Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, Saturday, few showers, um, chance of rain, 40 percent, no wind. Sunday, like you said, rain and wind, um, showers in the afternoon, 56, 20 to 30, 70% chance. But again, I'm, I'm glad that we don't see thunderstorms. That's the big deal. So, yeah. yeah it's going to be it's gonna be a bit sloppy out there, which is, honestly, I, I like uh, Homa too if the conditions get kind of sloppy. I remember he won, um, what was it? Uh, it was it was at TPC Avon Avenal whatever that uh, the uh, Wells Fargo a couple of years ago. Okay, it was like super super rainy and cold and windy. So he's a guy like uh, when the con- con- conditions get bad. By the way, so so Morikawa, um, you know, twenty first in this field in windy conditions. So, you know, twenty first out of out of eighty, not not great. I mean, no. not horrible. None of these guys are too far down the list, but he definitely takes a hit when it gets windy. All right, now let's get to the next. Uh group grouping that's the 30 to one to you know 60 to one kind of uh, uh you know roundabout numbers and um i tell you what let's let's talk about tell you what this is as good as time as any i'm going to flash the picks there are the picks so there you see jared we've already gone through his first two picks uh, i've only used one of my picks up but i've got a couple others coming as you can see so let's get into them so uh, a couple of my picks this week include Cameron Young and my boy, I have to go with him, and that's Hoygaard. Young is at 40 to 1, Hoygaard's at 45 to 1. And with Young, uh, this is uh, something that I did notice because I kind of figured it was the case, and I did the research, and it did kind of equal equate to uh, something that you want to keep an eye on uh, and maybe uh, give him an edge this week. Since uh, a full time PJ card member in 2022, when he scored a top six, six of his next seven events were top 20s including second, second, seventh, and eighth. What does that say? Well, once he has a good week, he, he, he tends to capitalize on that and get into a groove. And he was third at Dubai, as I remember. Now, maybe should have won, but um, let's keep in mind where he was coming from. I believe, what was it, this offseason? Changing his equipment, I believe, and so he had to get used to it. So now it looks like he is. Um, so I'm going to, I'm, I'm, and, 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 you know, the conditions being what they are, you know, the bombers might be coming into play. So I think young might be a solid stick with a hot guy and Hey, he hasn't won yet. So I also think that could uh, work into his favor. And then the other one is Hoy guard. And let's just keep this in mind. Hoy guard this time last year was 142nd in the world. Okay. So, uh, eight top fives worldwide since then. Three runner-ups and a win. Now, we talk about, are, are you winning on the PG Tour? Are, are, you know, are competing, or are you doing that in big events? Well, keep this in mind. During the streak, he was second at Ned Bank to Max Homa, who won the event. All right? He was also second at Punakana a few months back, PG Tour. He was sixth at the Scottish Open, where Rory McIlroy won. So... And biggest of all was his win in the DP Tour Championship, holding off Victor Hovland, you know, and and a bunch of others, John Rahm and so forth. So he's that good. This is is a fluke. This is a guy that's battle tested, confidence is sky high with the second place finish last week. And because of that, I think he's a solid play this week. Um, But I think both of those guys are intriguing, and that's why I took him. Yeah, Hoygaard, um, that proximity range, 100 to 125 yards, he's 13th in this field. So, you know, just missed the top 10, but tends to do well with those wedges. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't – I think la- I think last week was a better fit for his game just because he's such a long driver of the golf ball. And, you know, that again, that doesn't matter as much here. But, um, yeah, he like I'm I'm with you. He's, he's an awesome player. He's going to win on the PGA Tour very soon. All right, now some other guys in this uh, in, in in this area here. I mean, look, Benny on is a forty to one. I would like a little bit better odds for on, yeah. um, which is why I didn't go his way. But yeah. you know, everybody knows how we feel about him, and he's a dangerous player. Let's keep in mind he was sixteenth at the U.S. Open in two thousand nineteen. So 
Also 37th last year here, so he got his feet wet. Four top fives, two runner-ups in his last seven. So you know how he's playing. Uh, Jason Day at 45 to 1. Uh, 13 to 13 cuts, 11 top 25s, 8 top 10s, 5 top 5s, runner up in 2018. Uh, did not play Pebble last year, but that was probably because he saved his time for the signature event the following week at Phoenix and the week after, and he finished 5th at Phoenix and ninth at Genesis. So, plays a good brand of golf this time of year also 21st at the u.s open in 2019 the only problem with me with jason day was uh he's not on top of his game right now he's coming off a miscut right. and even though he made 13 and 13 cuts he never won and now the field is loaded so those are yeah. all things i was a little bit uh you know but i mean you have to obviously keep him in mind yeah day is similar to cantley to me where you know these guys have excellent course history um, but they're just, they don't seem like they're, uh, you know, on their A game right now, ready, ready to win. You know, not, not to say they can't, but I, I wish, I wish Day had played better, you know, both last week and at American Express where he finished just uh, 34th that week. So it doesn't, doesn't seem like he's, he's got it right now. Uh, some other interesting notes from players in this uh, area here. Another player that uh, we got to start keeping an eye on. You have him on your fantasy team and that's Bo Hostler. Bo Hostler's made now eight straight cuts, coming off a sixth last week. He had a second at Zozo uh, in the fall. Six pro runner-ups and three runner-ups on the PGA Tour. So he's getting close. 11th on this course last year, third the year before that. So he really likes the golf course as well. So if you're looking for a long shot in this area, I definitely think he's there. And I, I, he almost made my list. Post on a lot of people taking him. I took him a couple of weeks ago as a one and done. He's made 12 straight cuts, 10 top 25s, seven top 10s, three top fives, and a runner up. Um, but in six signature events last year, he missed the cut five times and mm -hmm. finished 38th in the other. That means, you know what? Let's see how he does in his first signature <laughs> event of 2024. And if he misses the cut again, then you know what to do the next time it comes around. But that kind of <laughs> uh, scared me off. You have one of your picks here at 50 to 1, Eric Cole, 15th year last year. Um, and this guy just is a machine. Now, <laughs> last week, he missed the cut. And maybe it was the best thing for him because he had yeah. uh, 18 straight cuts he had made going into that. But I say that because. Uh, this is going to be his uh, fifth straight week of playing. And last year, he went through a streak of nine straight weeks of playing. And this guy just plays. I mean, I think it might be he just started to play well and might have been like, hey, man, this is good. I'm making money. Yeah. I just got to keep going out there and playing as long as I'm making cuts. Yeah. But maybe the miscut last week was the best thing for him. Yeah, and Torrey's just not a good fit for his game. You know, he's he's not a long driver. So it wasn't a total shock that he missed the cut last week. It doesn't really concern me. Now, I, listen, I – I have questions about whether Eric Cole can win this event, right? Cause he's still looking for that first win. Is he really going to get it at an elevated event? So that's the concern here. I, I just had to bet him because the numbers I'm looking at just absolutely love Eric Cole this week. But basically I, I think he's a perfect fit for this course. He's actually second in my model. It's, it's Scotty Scheffler one, <laughs> then it's Eric Cole two. And then, you know, right behind Cole is here. Let me pull it up right behind Cole, it's, you know, Xander, Morikawa, Hovland. So it's, you know, it's Cole and all these other, you know, studs um, at the top of the model. So just looking at Eric Cole over the last 12 months, he's sixth best in this field in approach. He's first in that proximity range. We talked about hundred to 125 yards. He's first on short par fours, par fours between 350 and 400 yards, which there are a bunch of on this course. Um, like you said, 15th place here last year. I also looked at just, in general, courses under 7,200 yards, which Pebble Beach is. Pebble Beach is one of the shortest courses on the PGA Tour. Um, Eric Cole, over the last two years, third best in this field on those short courses. So just kind of everything points his way, having a good week, week this mm -hmm. week. I think mean, he's like an excellent top 10 bet. Um, again, whether he can win, we'll see. But, you know, 50 to 1 was enough for me to take a shot. Hey, you know what? He kind of does fit the model of what we're seeing mm -hmm. this year. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, that's, uh, th these are the types of guys that we have to be keeping an eye on. Uh, yeah, because the other thing too, to keep this in mind that the players that did win, um, uh, this year, uh, the, even the last three, Pavon, Murray and Dunlap, uh, Pavon had never played ever at Torrey Pines. Dunlap, of course, had never played, uh, at that golf course. 
Amex, and Murray was making his second appearance. He missed the cut in his first appearance. So, hey, you know, if you have one appearance or no appearances, which a lot of these guys do because, again, some of these don't play at Pebble at the Pro-Am, I'm not going to worry about it this week. All right. Um, next grouping, and then you have, by the way, Matsuyama is in that at 65 to 1. Adam Scott almost made my list, but he kind of dropped to 55 to 1. That worries me a little bit, but I do like the way he's playing. Keep this in mind. In his last four events, all top sevens, the last time that he played in four events straight and all had top tens was 2016. So that's how well Adam Scott's playing. Matter of fact, you have to go back to um, 2016 being the year that was the last time that he was actually a great player. He was ranked the last time he was in the top 10. He was the seventh ranked player in the world. That's how well he's playing right now. And in his last three signature events last year, he finished all in the top 20, two top 10s, and one top five. So there's good signs that maybe Adam Scott, who was seventh in the U.S. Open in 2019, might I mean hey you know what I don't only have a couple more years uh, of being on it because this is a guy that used to like take a lot of time off didn't play a whole lot was it you know his family was very important and he just was never that guy that was like all oh, golf 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 you just get the feeling that he's kind of maybe at that point where you know what I only got a few more years of this and you know, my kids are starting to grow up and you know let me let me be let me be selfish let me be let me take care of myself here and see if I could do something so that's why I think this year is a good year for Adam Scott maybe to win again. But the 55 yeah. to 1, I was a little concerned with. He and Scott has been excellent at Riviera, where we're going in a couple of weeks, including a win back in 2020. So, yeah. Um, there you go. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not betting this week. I'd like to see him play well and get, you know, get some reps in this week. I'm not sure if he's playing at Waste Management next week. Probably not. I, was assuming, I'm, I would assume he's taking a week off. But um, de- definitely someone who I'll be looking to bet at Genesis. Uh, and one of my other picks is Denny McCarthy, and this should not be a surprise at 70 to 1. Uh, this is a really good week for him. His last two trips to Pebble, fourth and 12th, a combined 26 on the par. Uh, he's, you know, he's, he's playing decently well. First two events this year, eh, you know, okay. But last two events of last year, 10th and 5th. Five of seven signature events last year were in the top 25. So he really played well in these events. Four of those were top 15s, three top 10s, and he was runner-up at Memorial. I think the combination of him playing well in the signature events, he's played well here before, I think, and he's never won a PJ Tour event. I think this might be a good sign for Denny to be in contention this week. Yeah, I think it's a good course for him, you know, shorter course. Um, and he he's the second best poet putter in this field behind him. Oh. Very nice to hear. Uh, let's also talk about some of these other long shots. Justin Rose is 80 to 1. Again, he won last year and he was third at the 2019 US Open, as we talked about before. The problem is his game is just not very good right now. Yep, yeah, exactly. Same, you know, similar deal to Cantley and Jason Day. That's what I'm saying. And even it, it's a tough week because the guys who have played here often and played well, like aren't coming into the event playing well. Then you have guys who are playing well coming into the event that just don't really have any course history here. So it's you know it's tough to find uh, anyone that you know kind of checks all the boxes. All right, and then we're going to go into uh, a couple more of my long shot picks. Um, uh, one's on my fantasy team. I just picked him up, and he's in your stats. Bazoo Newt, uh, ninety to one, and uh, the other one is Patrick Rogers at eighty to one. Uh, so uh, we do have him on your stats, which is nice. He was 14th at Pebble in 2022, so that's good. Last seven events, he has four top tens, two top fives worldwide, including, of course, the second place finish a couple of weeks ago. And then you have uh, Rogers, same thing like Scott a little bit. In his last four events, all top 25s. He has not had four straight events of top 25 since 2015, and he's never had five straight top 25s on the PGA Tour before. So uh, that's how well he's playing. He's coming off a ninth place finish last week. He's only made one of five cuts at Pebble. That was an eighth in 2018. But uh, again, he does. He is familiar with the golf course, and he is playing better than he's played before coming into this event. Uh, Todd is also uh, in this level. He's at 90 to 1. You mentioned him. Uh, Todd has four top 20s and 10 appearances, three top 10s, and runner-up to Justin Rose last year. So that's important. He's made 11 straight cuts with three top 10s and a runner-up at John Deere. Um, He has not won a PG Tour event since 2019. And another one, Taylor Montgomery, is one of Jan's top two 
uh, one and done plays along with Patrick Cantlay. So she's got a sleeper oh, wow. here in Montgomery wow. uh, who uh, in his last four events, three of them are top 15s, including an eighth at the RSM. That's interesting. I, w- I wish we had Jan on so she could tell us why exactly she's on Montgomery this week. It doesn't, this doesn't seem like the best course fit for him. Um, but I'd be curious to see what she's thinking there. Um, yeah. Again, Todd, it's like a perfect fit here. He's played well here in the past. I don't trust the guy to win. Um, but I, but I think if you're looking to make like a top 10 bat that, um, Brendan Todd makes a lot of sense. And then rounding out your long shot, uh, and, uh, he has dropped from 200 to 130. So maybe some other, uh, uh, handicappers uh, picked up on something, (laughs) but you tell me why, why Mark Hubbard at 130 to one. So basically, it's because Mark Hubbard led the entire field last week in strokes gain approach. Ah, he was the the best player in the field on approach, and even longer term. You look over the last twelve months, he's the seventh best player in this field on approach. Now he you know, he has other holes to his game. He's not the best driver. He's not the best putter. Um, but when it comes to approach, which is very important at Pebble here, again, a shorter course, but with the really small greens, you need to be super accurate. Approach play matters a lot here. And Hubbard has made three straight cuts here, gotten better each time. Fifty fifth, thirty third. 20th um again you know can, can mark hubbard win an elevated event I'd, I'd say no but we've also you know seen uh these past four weeks guys winning that we weren't expecting so you know a uh, few few bucks on hubbard at, at 200 to one or even you know 130 to one i don't know i'm not i'm not as interested at 130 to one but sh- shop around i'm sure you could probably still find them at 200 to one somewhere uh some uh maybe some bargains uh if you want to take a look here Look, he's not on top of his game, uh, but still, Ricky Fowler's 110 to one. I mean, that's big. That's a big number for Ricky Fowler. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, keep that in mind. Maverick McNeely is someone that maybe we'll start paying more attention to because, again, he was injured for a while, but he's starting to get back into the swing of things. And I believe, I think he has a good history at this golf course. He, uh, yeah, he has two top fives at this golf course at 150 to one. Uh, your boy Luke List is 150 to one. Your boy Adam Svensson is 150 to one. Uh, my boy Taylor Moore, who has uh, come by 19 under par, two top 20s and two uh, appearances here, is 180 to one. Uh, Lucas Glover, who's on your stat list, is a, I believe is on the stat list at 180 to one. I think he was. I on think he's on the stat one. list. Yes. Yeah. He's second best in that proximity range. Okay. Um, I, I remember Luke, there was a reason. I looked in him. There's reason I didn't take him. I think he is. He just not playing. Yeah, he's not playing well all that well lately. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. 29th of century miscut at Sony. Um, he, he actually hit the ball well at Century. He did not at Sony. He, he's he, he's a fine long shot play if you're looking for one. Yeah, and speaking of long shots, I, I while I do see we're talking. Uh, that's why I'm saying I think that even though yeah, signature event, better players, more money, it, you should start seeing the, this this long shot stuff go away. But I think that there's still reason for it this week, and that is if you take a look at it, in general, the history of Pebble is about long shots. That's the history yep. of Pebble. We can go back to Gary Woodland, even though he was a top 35 player. Nobody expected Gary Woodland to run away and win the U.S. Open. He was never good in majors. Then you take a look at the guy before that was uh, Graham McDowell. He was just okay. He wasn't nobody was expecting him to win a U.S. Open. It was his first major win. That was back in 2010. And then if you take a look also generally at um, at uh, the history of of this golf course, we can and and because I'm not going to use any of the trends because they're all different. You know, we'll get back into these trends next year if it's not a signature event. You know, again, talking about obviously the field and the fact that we're two courses instead of three two days instead of four for pro-am. So there's a lot, you know, but if you look at it, the last 12 first time winners at Pebble beach ranked 142nd before winning. So there's a lot of long shots that win at Pebble. Also, we mentioned the ones at the U S open. I mean, so guys, the the, the top guys just don't seem to win very often, even Mm -hmm. in the U S open at Pebble beach. And if you're thinking this is going to be an exciting event down to the last stroke, well, there has not been a playoff at Pebble beach since 2008 and only four of the last 20 winners won by one stroke. So 16 of the last 20 winners had breathing room. 
Hmm. That's interesting. And that's Too a long to time 18, to not have a playoff. All right. 18 such a good hold. It'd be nice to see it come down to that. Um, did we mention, did we mention Nick Taylor? No, we didn't. He, he's interesting to me. 110 to one. Um, he's again, first on our course history list, um, including the win in 2020. And he missed the cut at the American express, but he he came seventh at the Sony open with awesome approach play. He gained 5.7 strokes on approach that week. Um, so I'm actually yeah, you mentioned him that week. One. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised. Yeah. I, I, uh, well, I, yes, I bet him the Sony week. Yep. Um, he was in the mix, uh, like midway through Sunday before kind of tapering off. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a little surprised he's 110 to one just based on the history. Um, so I think he's a, he's a pretty good long shot bet. Yeah. Six top thirties out of nine with that win in 2020. Yep. Yeah. That's a good one. And Jaeger, by the way, Jaeger, now the odds aren't all that good because he started at 90 to one. He's dropped all the way down to what? 60, 65 to one, I think, 55 to one, 75 to one now. So that's a little bit better. But he's now made 20 straight cuts. And remember, we talked about the fact that he had one top 10 in those all those cuts he was making. We said, yeah, but he, he, he's not in contention. And one top 10. Well, now he's gotten into contention. So the next time he's yeah. there, watch out. So And it, I, I know he didn't, he didn't, he didn't close the deal at Tory, but it didn't it didn't seem like it was like too big for him it didn't seem like he was like super nervous and like kind of choked he just kind of didn't have it on saturday missed a few short putts so i, I thought it was a pretty encouraging performance I, I definitely think you know he he could close the deal next time he's in contention and uh by the way kevin Yu, um who's chun yeah. on you uh is 90 to 1 somewhere in that range 80 to one to start the week seventh last year at this event and his last two on the tour sixth and third now he really has come from nowhere so mm-hmm. i still think 90 to one believe it or not is a little low like i said ricky fowler is 110 to one but yeah. hey kevin you has got something going on right now so he's never won a pro event though never for sure of any kind so yeah, he, yeah he's interesting he i know he's a bomber um which makes sense. He would have played well at Farmers. Again, you don't really need to be a bomber at Pebble. But like you said, he came seventh at Pebble. He was also sixth at John Deere last year, which is a short golf course. Um, he was 21st at the Sony Open in 2023, which is a shorter golf course. So despite the fact that he does bomb the ball, he, he's played pretty well at these short courses. All right. I'm going to, by the way, I'm going to, before we leave, I'm going to flash the, uh, our updated, uh, fantasy standings. So there they are. Jan still, of course, has the lead. I've now moved into second. Uh, Jared is right there. Um, but none of us, of course, have won yet. So, uh, there you go. And our live tour players, you see them right now. They will come into effect finally this week. So still a long way to go. Were there any players that you would have, uh, con- that you are right now, would you consider, as uh, hey, you know what? This is a guy I'm keeping an eye on, just in case I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna make a switch with my uh, with one of my players in the coming weeks. Yeah, you know, I, honestly, I've been trying to find some time to go through the rosters and sort of look and see if there's anyone that would be worth picking up. So no one off the top of my head, but um, hopefully I'll, I'll find some time to to do that tonight or tomorrow, maybe even before uh, Pebble kicks off on Thursday. Yeah, there are there there's a lot of guys out there that uh, mm-hmm. you know if you if you because. There's going to be a handful of guys that are going to have good seasons that we have no idea who they are going to be. It's just a matter of whether we can pick them up before uh, before they win, especially. That's right. Because is Jaeger is Jaeger on a team or is no? he a free agent? Jaeger's available. There you go. I might, yeah, I might I might be picking up Jaeger tonight. That's what I'm saying. There's a bunch of guys that are available, so yep. uh, we'll see uh, how it goes. But again, our lists, our our teams are still pretty stocked, so. It'd be a lot better if we uh, add another uh, team or two in there in, in the coming years. I think that'll <laughs> right. make things a lot more fun. Yeah. All right. So that's going to wrap it up. Uh, next week, Phoenix, Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, I still, I still, we'll talk about that, of course, next week. But again, I, I think they're messing. I, I don't understand why they don't, but the tea times aren't earlier on Sunday. You get a playoff and you're right there by kickoff of the Super Bowl and all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah. Yeah, Phoenix will it will be very intriguing to find out who's in the field next week. So big events yeah, coming sure up after good, that. I'm sure it'll be a good yeah, I'm sure it'll be a good field just because yeah. because the of the event. But um Yeah, Genesis after that, which is my my favorite event of the year. Genesis? Yeah, I just I just love that course. 
All right, it's cool. My it's my favorite course that they play regularly. All right. Well, again, next week, no signature event. That was last year when Scotty Scheffler won. So uh, it is uh, Genesis the week after, but we'll talk more about that. Uh, again, uh, the one and dones, uh, Jared, uh, you are going, it's, again, just to, just to make sure, it's uh, right now you're going to lean towards Homa, um, and the other two were Morikawa and Thomas, correct? Yeah, I'm going to go home unless I think he's going to be popular. Then I might consider going to like Morikawa, but I'm probably going to end up going home. Well, just the fact that I'm thinking of Homer or Shoffley just gives you an indication right there. That, But then again, we're on the same show. So. I was going to say, that's, I'm, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and then Jan with Cantley and Montgomery. So uh, there you go. Uh, we'll be back next week, every week here on Tee Off with Jan Stevenson. Please uh, subscribe, share, and like. Uh, if you enjoy the videos, if this is a video that uh, is uh, helpful to you guys, if anybody out there wants us to talk about anything else, stats, fantasy, anything, uh, just let us know. And you can also, of course, uh, subscribe to our Discord channel. Uh, the links are in the description area. Uh, and that's going to wrap it up. So for Jared Small, I'm Greg DePom. We'll see you guys next week.